All right, that's three down, one to go. Let's keep it moving on to the next, and that is the West region. Last but not least, let's check, take a look at that bracket where North Carolina, pretty sure they're on the East Coast, but somehow they went out West, uh, got that number one seed. And you know the drill at this point. We are going to start. Chris, I will go with you. Who is your favorite in the West region? Listen, I, uh, North Carolina has had a tremendous season coming from where they came last year not making the tournament, being the number one ranked team in the country. Hubert Davis has certainly shown that he has some, some moxie and he's deserving of being uh, the lead of one of the best college programs of all time. But unfortunately, I don't believe that they will get past the Alabama Crimson Tide. I think that Alabama will get it done. Nate Oates, he's been knocking at the door a few years and this is the time that he will have a major win against uh, uh, North Carolina, because I think sometimes Baycott, I don't know where he is sometimes, and R.J. Davis is great, but my pick is the Baylor Bears. I believe Baylor and Scott Drew with Jacoby Walter, with Ray J. Dennis, R.J. Dennis, uh, Jaden Nunn, the transfer from BCU. I believe that these guys have the firepower, along with Langston Love, that firepower to get it done they played in an elite league like the big 12 so there's nothing that you're going to do that's going to surprise them i think they get past arizona i think nevada upsets arizona and i think that they play nevada to go for, to go on to play alabama to go to the final four and isaac you mentioned before we've talked about this it's about matchups when you look at the tournament surely you can say who the best teams are but where they're seated and how they match up, you look at the different teams and you say, OK, this team, if they played in their league, they would never survive. But in this situation, in the NCAA tournament, can Baylor get past said team? Can Kentucky right, get past that team in this group, in this uh, 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 bracket? UNC, I don't believe in just my opinion, can get to the final four and get past Alabama because Alabama is one of the best teams in the country, the best three point shooting team. I think athletically, athletically, they can defend them. And more importantly, when it gets to Baylor, I believe Baylor is the wild card that people aren't looking at that has an opportunity to do something amazing for Scott Drew and get back to the national championship game once again. I'm picking the Bears sick them. I'll tell you what. Baylor has six different players who average in double figures. And if you've ever been to Waco, I watched practice last year. Remember I said to Scott Drew at the end, I said, you know, I honestly thought that culture of joy thing or positivity, I thought that was just marketing. But this is honestly the happiest college basketball team I've ever been around. It, it is it is legit when you go down there. Um, Isaac, who is your favorite in this region? I'm going to stick chalk and go with Carolina. I don't know if I love it, but that's kind of where I keep going at because Arizona has some flaws. I think Baylor is a really, really dangerous team, too. I'm right there with Chris. But I, I do think there are some flaws on, on that resume, especially on the defensive end. Teams keep going at Ray J. Dennis repeatedly on defense, and that's an area of concern. Alabama's defense has really trended in the wrong direction lately. St. Mary's, I'm not sure if they can score at a high level. And so that leads me back to Carolina. And the, the beauty of this team is I don't think they're as talented as they were last year. But these pieces fit together so snugly. Like, I think the transfer portal gets of Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan and even Jalen Withers have really just complemented the star tandem of Armando Baycott and R.J. Davis. And I don't think Baycott's even had his best offensive season, but there's no doubt in my mind he's been playing at an elite level defensively. And R.J. Davis, runaway ACC player of the year, he's going to be the best player on the floor, I think, in every matchup that he goes up against throughout this bracket. That gives you a chance. And this team, too, has some nasty in them. Like, they they punk Duke, not once, but twice. And that has just stuck in my head a lot because they they are just a different-looking group, and they, they play a little bit differently. There's not a lot of finesse with this team. They can really punk you on the offensive glass, the defensive glass. You feel them on the other end. So there's some question marks with, with Carolina's ability to guard lead guards, and they're going to see a bunch of them, right? Josh Hubbard, Tyson Walker. Mark Sears, like this group is full of them. Caleb Love, right? If we could get the Caleb Love Carolina reunion, that'd be really, really fun. But I do think that this group has just enough nasty in them to make a deep, deep run. Like this team just feels different. And I, I'm kind of aboard the train. All right, fellas. Now, Chris, you mentioned this. I think Alabama's got a shot. Now, let me say, I think that first round game is a tough one. Charleston is a very good mid-major team. 
they are dangerous because they can get hot from the three point line. So I think if Alabama gets through that and doesn't overlook them, that's the thing. They got to guard. Alabama's got to come out and guard in that opening round game. But when you start moving past that, this is a team under Nate Oates that has one of the very best top two, in fact, offenses in the entire country. They play with a ton of pace. They play with a ton of shooting. It's been well documented. His commitment to the analytics. Don't tell him they don't matter because he'll have something to say to Jim Beheim about that. Uh He's he's on Ken Palm. Take my word for it. (laughs) Uh, This is a team that is going to be very, very dangerous, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens if they run into North Carolina. Isaac, you mentioned Mark Sears. This guy's averaging 21 points, about four rebounds, four assists, and his shooting splits are off the charts, 50% from the floor, 43% from three, and 86 uh, from the free throw line. Aaron Estrada is a really quality running mate. So this is an Alabama team that I think has to get past a tough Charleston team in the opening round. But if they do, could certainly make a run. All right, fellas, we will wrap this up with our final Cinderella picks in this last region. Isaac, I will start with you. Well, I think New Mexico got the shaft from the committee with this seed. This is an egregious seed to give them an 11. They're one of the top 25 teams on Ken Palm. All their other 11 seeds are well outside of this top 40 range. And this team has guards. What wins in March? Guard play. Donovan Dent. If you haven't heard the name, you better get used to it because he is a fantastic maestro in pick and rolls. Just un- unbelievable vision. Jalen House can basically make any play on the floor. Uh, unbelievable. He's a guy who can come off ball screens and, and get to his pull up, and it's nasty. He can get to the free throw line. He can get to the lane and finish with really nice touch. You get you get him uh, out in transition, or he's ripping ripping ball handlers, getting out in transition for layups. He's one of the best thieves in all of college basketball. And then Jamal Mashburn Jr., right? Another mid-range assassin. So this group has great guard play. I'm really bullish on JT Toppin, one of the better freshmen so far this year in college basketball. And when you have guards and you have a chance and you're under I think they're going to come in with a real edge. They're favored over Clemson in this first round game. Like they are the better team uh, than the sixth seed. So this is a really, really dangerous group. And you you look forward to that potential Baylor matchup. That could be first to 90 with this with these two teams. Committee was transparent. They said New Mexico was not in until they won their conference tournament. So they obviously have something to prove here. Chris, who do you like for your West Cinderella? You know, just to jump on uh, a little bit what Isaac said, I mean, you know, they had to win their league because they had some tough losses and they could not win at the pit. I worked at New Mexico, very tough place to play, and they couldn't get it done. And I, and a Rich Patino, shout out to him for the job that he's done. And I'll say this about the New Mexico Clemson game. It is a big game in one respect. A lot of people like myself, do not believe that the Mountain West deserves six teams and they're as tough as that league as they are. So they need to win that game, even though they got a lot of low seeds. They need to show the committee and reward them for putting so many teams in. The team that I like, it's funny, I'm going to say this, is Nevada. Now, I worked for Steve Alford, and Nevada finished one game behind Utah State and winning the Mountain West. It was a tough league and, and a bunch of quad one wins in that league. And they did beat TCU, neutral site in Hawaii. Jamie Dixon did get uh, uh, ejected from that game. They did, did, I'm sorry, they did win at Washington. That was a quad one win as well. But it's going to come down to this. Craig, Noodles, Nils, and Steve Alford, you guys know that dynamic duo, that tandem. Can they, right, do enough offensively? They've been an elite defensive team this year, right, particularly in their league. But they don't shoot the three well, right, but they do get to the foul line. As I mentioned before, Styles makes fights. And when you get to the NCAA tournament, and Steve Alford has been one of those guys, remember at UCLA when he had Lonzo Ball and he got a couple of sweet 16s, can they push through? And a lot of people got to understand the Mountain West, up until what San Diego State did last year, was a league that struggled to win in the NCAA tournament, period. And San Diego State obviously had that breakthrough and went to the Final Four. This will be a testament of what this season really is. You talk about about Danny Sprinkle, who returned zero points and won the league. So uh, the coach in me says, well, well, how good can that league be if a guy returns returns zero points and wins the league? But at the end of the day, the metrics favor the Mountain West, seventh best league. They did a great job uh, of competing Nevada, as I said before. But it's going to come down to Keenan Blackshear, Jared Lucas, an elite three-point shooter. Can he will if he has an elite game? Keenan Blackshear is a, a, a guard who can isolate, big guard, get to the rim. But as I said before, if they can't make threes, I'm never for a team that cannot make threes. It's just very difficult. But again, 
Also, the other side of that coin is if they can stop you from making threes and they can get to the foul line and make it a mud, a, a, a mud wrestling uh, event and make it a rock fight and have an elite coach like Steve Alford, who's one of four coaches to take five teams into the tournament, they can have a chance as well. That's my sleeper. Chris, I love that call too because Nick Davidson, complete stud, does everything to impact winning. All right, guys, you know who I like here? I like Grand Canyon. Uh, again, I'm going to say it, it's just an intriguing storyline. It's not just Scott Drew in this bracket. It's Bryce Drew as well. He's been here before with Grand Canyon, and he's got a player named Tyon Grant Foster, who, Isaac, you did a feature on earlier this year. And he's, in my opinion, one of the best individual stories in college basketball. Former junior college product, went to Kansas, then transferred to DePaul halftime of his first game at DePaul. He had nine points at halftime. He suffered a cardiac arrest. It took him out of basketball for two years. He was finally cleared around this time last year. He came back to the court and entered, put himself in the transfer portal as a grad transfer. Grand Canyon took him. And then you know what's happened? He won player of the year in the conference. Then he won conference tournament player of the year. And he has been nothing short of sensational. He does it all from all levels. Isaac, want to give you a chance just to jump in here because I know you dug super deep into this story, and it is admittedly one of the best stories of all of college basketball this season. Yeah, he collapsed once at halftime. He also collapsed a second time at an open gym with Christian Brown a little bit and later. People don't talk about, right? Everybody talks about the DePaul game. People don't talk about the one back in Kansas City. He legitimately thought he was never going to play again, and it's so cool when you see guys like this win. He's coming back and playing at a really high level. Tyon Grant Foster, the best story in college basketball this year. No doubt about it. All right. Well, that it concludes our breakdown of the four regions, but that takes us to Phoenix in the final four, and it's no preview show if we're not talking about who our individual picks are. So when we get to that final four, who is going to come out as the national champion? Chris? I'm going to start with you. Who's your pick to win it all? We know it's not a number one seed. It's definitely not a number one seed, but I do have Auburn playing Tennessee for the right to win the national championship. And I'm going to say it's going to be crazy, but Rick Barnes gets it done and the Vols win the national championship. All right. Kevin Durant's not walking through that door, but it does not matter. <laughs> I know he went to Texas. Uh, Isaac, who do you like as your national champion favorite? Give me two of the best teams in the country in the preseason, UConn against Duke, and I'll ride with UConn. Danny Hurley getting that repeat, I, I, it gets boring, but I just this team just feels like they have very little flaws. you got to play almost a perfect game to beat them. I'm not sure anybody can. Guys, I'll say this. Um, I think UConn has the hardest draw of the number one seeds. I know they're the, the number one overall seed, but as I said in the opener, I think they have the, the hardest draw, and it's going to begin with a matchup with Auburn as early as the Sweet 16, and that might include Florida Atlantic a game before. Um, it's it's going to be a long road for the Huskies, but they have been, as Danny Hurley says, clearly the best team in college basketball this season. Uh, things have to go right. They have to stay healthy, and that's the thing I don't think we talk about enough is that to win a national championship, you can't just be good. You also have to be a little bit lucky to win six games over the course of three weeks. So they've got to be lucky, as anybody would, and not suffer any injuries, see the ball go in a little bit more. But I think right now this is the best team in college basketball until someone else proves otherwise. But as we said, the road to Phoenix is daunting. I do think they have the hardest path to a national championship of any of the number one seeds. 